Are you saying you faked with me? Yeah. Wrong. Now you're single. What do you know about sexual relations? Is it true that if you don't use it, you lose it? I'm a little worried about being a slut. You're listening to the Come With Us podcast, presented by Darling Way, talking the good, the kinky, and the ugly. Here are your hosts, Beth, Aaron, and Tina. Hello, hello, all you sexy holes and poles. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Come With Us podcast. Where you're part of the, all the fun, sexy, naughty conversations that everybody wants to listen in on, especially do, because today we are at the Iron Gate Dungeon. Yes, a real life, modern day, kinky BDSM dungeon. The owner, Mistress Ella. We're here with her today. We've got so many. Oh, Mistress Ella Strickland. Forgive me. I might get a spanking for messing that up, folks. Golly, but it's going to be fun. And um, this is the first time that Aaron and Tina have been to a dungeon. I was so excited to show it off because I have been to a bunch of dungeons. I've never seen anything that is this beautiful, impeccable, amazing, the equipment, everything. And you'll hear all about it, as well as get to know what a real life professional dominatrix is actually like in real life. Because if you're like me, if you don't know one, I had some perception of them, I don't know, put on a bunch of like motorcycle gear and leather and just kind of sour face and just mean and intimidating. And I met Mistress Ella and was like, oh my gosh, all bets are off. But hey, as she says, she never thought she'd be hanging out with a divorce lawyer either. So we're both a little surprised and it's a a friendship I think is made in heaven. So, all right, welcome, welcome, Aaron and Tina and Mistress Ella Strickland. Thank you so much for letting us come and visit you in your dungeon. Yes, a very, very unique place, I would say. I have never seen anything like this. This is totally new to me. Um, And I would say, well, we just got the tour, but we'll tell you guys about it. But um, I would say, like, starting off, how how did you become Mistress Ella? Where, what's, what's, what was your journey towards? towards the you don't think she just woke up one day when she was like well, 10 you, years old and was like i'm gonna be a professional dominatrix know, in life maybe. right that would be a great story no i was like beth i had preconceived ideas about a dominatrix mm-hmm. this is what i thought a dominatrix was i thought a dominatrix was a former junkie prostitute streetwalker who survived it all hated men <laughs> oh right right was a I man forgot. hater right. wanted to hurt men burn cigarettes out on them and you know stuff like that and that's what I thought it was so when people would tell me that I was a dominatrix because of the stuff that I was doing to guys I'd like oh, how could you I'm not one of those mm-hmm. you know yeah. what I dress a guy up as a French maid and he serves his tea and I spank him come on that's not a dominatrix mm-hmm. and this was before this was you were a professional right this was just your idea of dating and romance right yeah yeah So that's what I love is that we all have these ideas. And and I say what what I think is a turn on, you think is crazy. What you think is a turn on, I think is crazy. Like we're all crazy in our own ways. And it's so interesting. Well, honestly, no, I thought he was twisted, just not me. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. I like that. (laughs) Right. So it was, it was a, a relationship you were in and this man, I guess, introduced you into the, to this. This particular one was my very first BDSM experience. experience. That's how okay. it started. Yeah. Um, I was rather young. I was going out night clubbing with a girlfriend. Mm-hmm. And she said, listen, we'll swing by this friend of mine's house. She's got this guy in her apartment. He was with his dominatrix of the day. Mm-hmm. She said, we'll swing by. And she said, and uh, we'll make some money. I said, Whoa. What are you talking about? Come on, Kay. We're going out clubbing tonight. Mm-hmm. What do you know? She said, no, 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 no. It's not what you think. I, I, <laughs> okay. She said, you just go in there. You put your hands on your hips. You stand up, boss him around, stick your big boobs out, you know, and just get really bossy. And she said, and he'll get into this really regressive kind of little boy talk. And if he changes out of that personality, get bossier. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I got to see this. <laughs> Did part of you hear that and go, oh, that sounds exciting, though? Of course. Uh, okay. I'm like, I got to see this. And so we go over there, and it was just like she said. Mm-hmm. And I was high as a kite. And 
<laughs> I sent her to the back. And I mean, yes, there was the money thing, you know. We right. sent her to the back room and she said, no, wait, wait. Call him back out here and tell him we need more. Mm. I'm like, of course, she was greedy. She was taking half of it. <laughs> but I didn't really care. Right. This was awesome to me. So, you know, I called him back out and then we took off and we had a grand evening and I forgot all about it. About a year and a half later, I get a call from the same girlfriend, okay? And she's at his house, his little in-town house when he was here. And she said, you remember that guy? I'm like, oh yeah, like I'm gonna forget that guy. <laughs> she goes, love that. It's like he popped your dominatrix cherry. <laughs> totally. And I thought nothing of it except that it was a dare. I love dares. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I did it and it was really a big high. And so I go over there. She said, I'm at his house. I said, really? She said, well, what do you think? You want to come over? I said, yep, give me the address. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hooked. So I, like I go over there, and apparently his dominatrix had left town, and he was kind of flailing about with the various friends that she'd introduced him to whose phone numbers he did happen to have. And he asked Kay to leave, and <laughs> he got my phone number. And I ended up taking over the whole thing. Oh, wow, okay. And I was quite young, and he would complain about that because he was, you know, like about 60. Mm-hmm. Um, and he really liked women his own age, and I wasn't anything like that. But I looked at him one time, because he, my friend was a little upset. She felt like I took everything over, and I kind of cut out the uh, original right. crew, and I was bringing in more and more and more, because this was always a good cop, bad cop scenario. But what was fun, and I did this on my own, because his original dominatrix didn't do this. I went out, and I got French-made things for him to wear, Oh, that was thoughtful. I got of you. a paddle and a crop, and he never suggested these things. I just did this on my own, which he loved. And I went to uh, pay less, and I got him a pair of little white satin bride shoes. Made him wear those. Oh, I love that. And I would make him dress up and serve the tea, okay. and watch for him to spill or you know not do something right. And of course, then it was punishment time. And he loved me punishing him in front of these innocent women who never saw something like this before, just like me the first time. Okay. And, uh, and so that was kind of yeah. really it. Okay. And um, Did you have any mentors in this community, or was it kind of like you learned as no, you went? No, it was, so was just, just me. Okay. He was kind of mentoring me. He right. had this little personality he would flip into when we mm -hmm. were alone, Jack the Gambler. <laughs> Wow, he would okay. go. I nicknamed him Pee Wee because mm -hmm. I didn't want people to know who he really was for very good reasons. And so he would kind of flip into Jack the Gambler when I was screwing up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he'd be my co conspirator. He'd like, okay, look, here's what we're going to do, the little guy. All right, call your girlfriend and tell him, you know, hey, I'd call my girlfriend. This is what we'd set up. I'd say, look, Angela, I got a gambling problem and I'm really in trouble. And this little guy has a suitcase full of money. I desperately need this money. I swear to God, I'll split it with you. Please help me out here. He's not right in the head. We can easily take advantage of him. <laughs> I love over. this. And you're doing Please. this at his instruction. Like he's Absolutely. teaching you. This is so much fun. Just, he loved hearing the whole setup. Yeah. Just got really off on it. And, <laughs> and he did love it when I kind of took charge like buying the maid outfit and so on. And one time I looked at him when he, I told him, you know, Kay got very upset with me and she complained that I sort of took you over and so on. And he said, well, I said, oh, come on, look, Pee Wee, you and I both know nobody else can handle this. Nobody else can run this show like I can. <laughs> I go, she's flaky. She's irresponsible. She shows up late all the time. She's overly greedy. And he just kind of like went, wow, I like this. She's a kid, but hey, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. So... And I did bring him more mature women, okay. which was really hard because he was really fussy about, you know, he wanted her to be beautiful. And I said, Pee Wee women your age look like Aunt Bee. He said, But I love Aunt Bees. <laughs> I'm I like, Yeah, that. okay. Anyway. <laughs> so he was kind of your first. Very much a learning yeah. experience yeah. for me. He was okay. my first. Okay. But he see, was the one who kind of brought me out. And that's when my friends started calling me a dominatrix and I'd get really offended. Yeah. Interesting. But so I think that that's the difference is that there are people, some people literally will just play. They'll play at BDSM or they'll role play and, and they'll take turns being in charge and stuff. And, and for them, it really is play because 
they can sort of adapt that character, that that spirit for a short term, but it's not just the embodiment of who they are deep down. When you found it, it was, I think, from the way you describe it, it was like you found you. Like this was just you purely all the way through, right? You just far more to- exciting than sex. Yeah. And that's, interesting. And that's well, the difference. I think that I think. also brings up a, a interesting point. And again, I'm not coming from as much knowledge as Beth, obviously, like you're, you know, you have much more. But I think that really one of the most important distinctions you probably want to, like, we probably want to talk about is how does act- how does sex actually play into this lifestyle? And what, and where, what, how is it more of a, like, I would say like, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay. But but I think that's a very good question. But I think before we jump into that, let's. Why don't we start with the underlying, which is what is what does a a dominatrix yeah, sure. do, Absolutely, right? Because yeah. that people just don't know. Yeah. I mean, I had no idea. No, I have no um, idea. And looking around this place, I'm guessing that you and Aaron are both sort of a little surprised at the, you know, are were you surprised when you see this place? Uh, I mean, I'm surprised at the dedication. Okay. Like it, it's you, serious, yeah. And I've said this before. Whatever you're going to do, put don't ever half-ass anything. Put your whole ass into it. And Mr. Sella has done that well, because this puts, dungeon is more than whole ass. This this dungeon is. Mm. It shows just walking around that you enjoy what you do. Because if you did not enjoy it, all of these details, all of these small, just everything, would not be here. And it's a lot of it's. I admire it a lot because I admire that people are out there that because I love my job and I put everything I have into it every single day. But I see a lot of people who don't in their other jobs. And so it's great to see somebody who goes out there and does even more than I like. I think I'm a hard worker. I'm nothing compared to her. Right. And the detail. And that's what I loved. Aaron was like looking at different canes and stuff. And we'll talk more in the next episode about what the dungeon actually is. But the attention to detail, the the perfectionism, the absolute thought and care and investment of time, energy, blood, sweat, and tears, right? That's what I, I knew you would, Aaron, totally be impressed by. Um, because this isn't just, oh, let me just jump in and do something and charge mm-hmm. money for it. This is about your pleasure, your passion, your heart, your, frankly, your zone of genius and everybody else who walks in right. here, whether you're into it or not. I would say more like a, like an artisan almost. Yes. Like you have a craft and you've obviously honed it to a, a very good degree. No, thank you, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, anyway, so what is a dominatrix? If you had to describe your profession, what, what yeah. exactly is it? I'd say it's the person who takes charge of the situation with a trusting partner who's willing to give that power over to them. Okay. okay, so it's based on consent. Again, if absolutely. If there's consent. not consent, it's assault or whatever. It's consent criminal. Consent and trust. And yes, without consent, it is assault. Okay. Mm-hmm. So everybody that... Um, and dominatrix doesn't have to be professional, right? That's why we have professional absolutely not. dominatrixes or not. But So I like that. So dominatrix being just a female who's willing to step up, who's going to take charge. So it could be in the relationship generally, not just sexually. Right. Absolutely. You know, I run an organization for lifestyle only people. Okay. We have an event every month. And what, what does that mean, lifestyle only? Lifestyle non commercial. Okay. People who are doing this okay. outside of the commercial realm. And you know, couples who don't have dungeons at home, who have kids at home and need to go to a dungeon mm-hmm. to play. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. That makes sense. That and kind of thing. D- is there like a organization that certifies dominatrix? Do you have, you know, is there to make yourself a professional organization? Not professional? that I'm involved okay. in. <laughs> no, and, and that's one of the things I really want to make sure people recognize is that you can go to any city. You can find professional people who are calling themselves professional dominatrixes or professional doms all over the place. But you will not find people who are as educated, who are as serious, who are as responsible, who are as clean, who who have beautiful freaking, you know, museum quality dungeons ever. So there is just a vast difference. So if anybody is interested in some of this, I think discretion and checking people out, learning is absolutely imperative because you are putting a lot of trust and faith in somebody. Um, and Mr. Sala, you could joke about like that guy being vulnerable, but if you tie somebody up or you restrain them, I mean, you could take 
complete advantage of them. And I don't want anybody to be, again, abused um, with outside the realm of consent. So be very careful. But all right. So a dominatrix. So what do you think as a professional dominatrix? Um, what what would you think? Like, what are your goals? What do you is it just for your jollies? Is it for their jollies? Is it for money? What tell us what you your approach? It just became a part of my life. I couldn't give up at one point. That's like really that. how I got there. OK, you so know, you were just living this. It was private. Yeah. I had a real job. I worked very hard, actually. It was a seven-day-a-week job. Yeah. And this was something that self-employed, so I could work my own hours, and I could work my slave in on afternoon visits. I love which that. I work my slave in. She just casually enjoyed. looked forward to. Uh-huh. Um, and Pee Wee, my original slave, after a certain number of years, I lost him. He always had a bad heart. Oh. Well, he yeah, out, out of his ranch, he went out to pick up the mail, and they don't know if a car accident killed him or the heart attack killed him, but he had both at the same time. And I lost him. But by that time, I had acquired one more slave, and he was a European guy. And, of course, they're kinky as hell. I was introduced to him by a girlfriend of mine who was dating him, and she said, you know, um, I dating this guy he's really kinky i'm not sure i know what to do with him i kind of think you would know what to do with him he's an awfully good guy and i'm like well i don't know tell me about him she said well he bought me a pair of thigh high boots i said i want to meet him (laughs) and so um we met and he came to my townhouse and he immediately went to his knees and he presented me with two pairs of thigh high boots that he had just had custom made for me in london Oh my God. One was patent leather and the other was leather. And I went immediately upstairs and I told him to take a seat. And I was in this loft townhouse that, where the bedroom was upstairs, but it was kind of open, you know, above so that you could hear me changing. And he said he sat there and he heard me zipping up those boots. And he said when that zipper went up my boot, he felt a chill go up his spine. <laughs> Oh, that's hot. <laughs> he said, I knew I found my mistress at that moment. Aww. So, yeah. So that's that, like actually a traditional, I mean, weirdly, a little bit of a traditional little love story that there's this one defining moment where something just clicks. I, yeah. Yep. And so that was it. He was mine. And um, at one point I said to him, look, you know, it's not really fair that we play and accumulate because we were accumulating equipment he gave me a credit card i'd go shopping i'd call him up and he'd get i'd say guess what i found and he'd like what mistress because he's british you know scottish actually and and i'd tell him okay i'm trying to decide between this and between that oh mistress please get both and so and then he couldn't wait to come visit me with the new toys and i said we have to have a place Mm -hmm. i can't keep accumulating all this at my place it's not fair We can't put it at your place. We have to meet at my place. And it's just not fair. I need my privacy just like you need yours. So I found a little place that was for us. and Oh, like a pied de terre? It was a one-bedroom condo, and we just filled it with playthings and fetishy furniture and played there. That was our place. That was Mr. Zella's first dungeon. That was my first play space. And he was the only client that you had. That's it. Because I worked too hard for any more. Right. Was was he actually a client then? Was this? Well, he paid for the place. Yeah. Okay, cool. (laughs) Okay. He paid for all my habits. That's awesome. But he was my slave. Yeah. Okay. Because some people think that that there's a big distance or something perhaps between um, when there's a financial arrangement involved. I kind of argue that it's kind of like with your shrink. You know, I had a shrink for 20 years and I loved him dearly and I know he loved me and I paid him for our sessions and the love and the affection and the respect superseded that, right? So I think that was probably similar to what you experienced. Yeah. it's a It becomes yeah. like part oh, of your yeah. world, right? You care if you, yes. when you really are invested in what you do. And at one point, we did breach the wall of yeah. being intimate right. and the play. Um, he was my only boy. Aww. And uh, it, he just went absolutely nuts over licking boots. 
That oh. was. Oh. Yes. Yes. Oh, I love it. So now. It and, was my little boot licker, thus my website, like myboot.com. I love that. And so anybody out there who's interested in following up with Mistress Ella, then, um, and it's not easy to get an appointment with her and all this sort of stuff. You have to apply. You have to, you know, go through a tough screening. But it's lickmyboot.com. You can find Miss El- Mistress Ella Strickland. Yeah, it's really funny. I was shocked when I went to do my website that that name was available. Like my boots, plural, was taken, but not like my boot. And I thought, oh, perfect. Mm-hmm. However, I never had at that point in time any thoughts of a website, a business, anything like that. This was just my place and his place and our thing. Um, he had to go back to Europe. and uh, He got transferred. He went away, and I'm like, I can't give this up. What am I going to do? I have to get more slaves and I have to pay for all this stuff Mm -hmm. and I have to pay for this place. So I put out an ad and I, from the applications that came in, I realized that having been, and this is the thing about lifestyle couples too, having been very, very far down the road with two submissives and developed our fantasies together Mm -hmm. as far as we did, and we went way far but it was just ours. And I get all these applications and there's all these submissives interested in all these realms of play that I never experienced, that I never explored. And so I just kind of cherry picked. There were a few boys out of my ads that I knew I could deal with. Mm -hmm. And then I removed the ad. Clarify, when she says boys, that's like an affectionate term for the adult male clients that she has because again there's everything is above board and legal so you must be an adult boy is just the term that sort of keeps them like slave or houseboy or anything like that so just fyi we are talking i don't play with anyone under 21 in fact usually they're well over that but yeah yeah just just to make sure because some again and it's because if you don't know you literally don't know so um and some of these terms people take for granted we you have to explain you have to have the first time when you say they played in your realm what was can you give me some ideas of what some of these realms would be so you know some of the different categories yeah sissy maids which i'd experienced a lot of fetish which you know i had tons of and a lot of pro doms don't have the fetish that i had okay so wait let's again just break this down so sissy maid becomes sort of obvious but there are a lot, a huge number of actually incredibly successful professional males who enjoy having the, you know, yin to their yang and being dressed up as women in high heels or women's underwear and skirts and corsets, etc. right? So- My original slave was a very successful and well-off old money guy. Yeah. And very rough and tumble. He had a big ranch. Yep. And um, slave number two is the CEO yeah, a big company. So when you say, yeah, big when, company. When you say sissy maid, is it specifically just being dressed up in any sort of more, like, I would say female-like garb? Yeah, it's feminizing, feminizing, but okay. it's in a, the sissy style. There's different ways. There's okay. sluts. There's sissies. I kind of like the sissy thing with okay. the little Alice in Wonderland outfit or the, right. the little pedophore and the little apron mm-hmm. and the maid. Mm-hmm. And that's what I would do. And it is the most humiliating. Mm-hmm. And okay. the maid, because it's usually, it's the opposite, right? It's the job that typically right. gets uh, demeaned and people take advantage of historically. And it's a huge sexy fetish for men and women. I say everybody should have a French maid's costume and nobody should really A clean. lot of males find it easier to uh, submit to a woman who removes their masculinity, mm-hmm. who okay. masculates oh, that's, them. Yeah, that's, that's a, yeah, that's a good one. Okay, and then when you're talking about fetish stuff and you're saying, so what particularly um, fetish the definition was actually getting turned Saddle on by up an inanimate as a pony oh. put him in a little doggy mm-hmm. mask mm-hmm. and make him my puppy mm-hmm. okay you know um those kind of games okay. a lot of fetish play games okay. um what about specifically like with types of material like leather or leather and latex was okay. my deal yeah, yeah because that's pretty much what the fetish Right. goes into but it can also be like the fantasy with the sissy maid mm-hmm. i have an institutional maid outfit which seems to be the most humiliating oh yeah because it's ugly i've seen i've actually seen a man in it and it is not very attractive it not only takes away their masculinity but it, it's like they can't even feel pretty in it they just feel drab and and something so which is an interesting perception to want literally to be brought into your most base you're just simply existence so anyway 
kind of fun. Okay, so the fetish stuff, yeah, you have an amazing assortment and collection of things and um, headpieces and masks and things. Well, I was getting requests when I did this ad for a lot of bondage, a lot of skills I hadn't developed. CBT. Um, you got to tell people. So electroplay. Uh, okay, so CBT would be cock, cock and, and balls, balls torture, torture, which people like they like to get kicked sometimes they want to be trampled they want to be stepped on um they just want to be squeezed Aaron, is any of this exciting you hell no <laughs> i'm surprised you're not holding onto your crotch right now because when i think about it like that's what i do um i mean like my balls tightened up like oh god if you go anywhere near me i'll mm-mm. nope <laughs> I love that. Again, because if it's not your thing, it's not your thing. But frankly, even sometimes when it is your thing, you might cringe. And yet there's part of you that goes, ooh, there's a little bit of excitement along with that cringe. So, And see, I'm always, I've always said, you know, if my wife, if it turned my wife on, I would try it once. Yeah. That, nope. Really? Not at all? No. Oh, I'm surprised because you have said you would do anything. So Almost anything except probably that. Yeah. That I, needles, no. I you once, can go find somebody else. I okay. once showed up with my favorite steel humbler to a show and tell meeting you got to tell people what's a humbler well let me get there okay okay to a show and tell meeting and um i thought well i'm not going to go empty-handed this is a show and tell and uh but it was like a pansexual group meaning male doms female dom everything mixed up and uh they were all showing off their favorite toys and i brought this thing in because i'd had it custom made and it's basically a contraption that clamps down on the neck of the balls and it kind of wings out behind the uh, buttocks, which forces a guy into a humbled position, bent over. He can't stand up in the thing, in other words. And so I brought that and kind of got to my turn. And I sort of apologetically said, well, I brought a femdom toy. And everybody went, woo. I thought, oh, okay. And then I showed it to them. And they were so intrigued, they asked me to pass it around. And it was really funny because I passed it around. The women were all looking at it, you know, and moving around. The guys would, like, put their forefinger and their thumb on it and sort of hold it away from themselves like it was something that smelled like poo. <laughs> With their thighs <laughs> tightly clenched together, I'm sure. Pass it on to the next guy. <laughs> <laughs> but you could tell the ones that were sort of into it would go, ooh, and they kind of played with the little trap, go, ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. There you so go. you know, get very different responses from one person to the next on For these sure. things, yeah. But again, if you never see this, and God knows I didn't, I never saw this stuff. I never had anybody introduce me to any of it. I had no idea it existed or that there is a way to engage in this stuff in a in a healthy, safe relationship manner. So like people need to see, even if it's not your thing, you need to be able to see it or you have, you can't say, oh yes, it is for me or you don't. And that's why I'm convinced so many people are living uh, very unhappy sexual lives because they think their only choice of romance, their only choice of sexy is, you know, our traditional candles and a soft touch. And then, you know, maybe some oral and some penetration and there you go and go to sleep. And there's so much more. I can say this. People who know me and understand me well um, can tell when I've not had a good corporal scene, you know, uh, because... Haven't had one in a while. Not that you've had a bad scene that happened. Enough to adjust my... (laughs) Your mood. (laughs) Attitude. They're like... Because it just works out my aggressions. My aggressions are gone after a good corporal scene. And... um, it keeps me very balanced. I mean, I don't like dominant people. I don't like bossy people that impose themselves on other people. I'm not one of those people. I'm very easygoing no, for the most part. I'm not pushy with people. Never. But I get all that out of my system. Yeah. I don't think I'd be like that anyway, but I might be a lot, a little pent up. Yeah. So it's I, very I asked, good for me. I asked one male dominant who just had a very stressful life, very stressful job. And I, I was like, what do you do? How do you release all of that? Like I, after hearing about some of the stuff he was dealing with, he looked at me like befuddled. And he's like, I, I, I beat people's asses. What are, you, what are you talking about? I get it out all the time. And I was like, oh, that's true. And, but he doesn't do it in anger. He doesn't do it in frustration. Like he literally does it in his pleasure and his partner's pleasure and it takes care of all these other needs. It's really pretty I never incredible. play to work out anger. When people well, say, yeah, right. I know you're angry with me, just beat me. I'm like, no. Mm-mm, that Mm-mm. Is good. Yeah. I think that's 
a very good rule in BDSM that the best, the, the people who take it seriously know BDSM is actually about pleasure and about connection and about sure. intimacy. Not- so where does the sex come in? Like, like that, really, that's just what I want to know. I, I, no, I, that's one of the things that just I'm very curious about. Where does sex play into? Where would you see it coming in? See, I, I don't really know because for a lot of the men who must come to you or most of the men who must come become aroused or they get aroused, I'm guessing, from what they are doing. And obviously we had this conversation before and, and you may explain it better, but no sexual intercourse happens ever in... No, I make it very clear when people book with me. Most men who book with me and women, whatever, they understand what this is. Some don't, you know, it's very kind of almost mainstream now and people get curious and they're like, oh, gee, do do I get to do this? Do I get to do that? And I look at the application and if I see that there's something on there, like I want to do body worship on you, mistress, or I'd like to do, you know, whatever that entails, I'm very clear. Yeah. Body worship. They're thinking oral sex. Right. That they want to give. And there are men who actually would love to spend they three would hours love to do that. Making out with your pussy or any woman's pussy kind sure. of thing mm-hmm. and stuff. But yeah. So you say. Uh-uh. And that is sexually very submissive. Right. But what I make clear, because I don't want anybody walking away from my dungeon feeling ripped off or feeling like they right. were led into some kind of expectation that they didn't get. And I make it very clear. There will be no sexual access to me. And... Um, if you mean that by body worship, no. Mm-hmm. If you, you know. mean lick my boot, I'm pretty sure you're all Absolutely. over that. So Kiss my butt, maybe even. But do most mm-mm. of your male clients, frankly, do they ejaculate in your sessions? Generally, no. No. Okay. Sometimes they have a masturbation problem, and I want to observe what's causing the problem. Maybe discuss it while they do it, or mm-hmm. something like that. That's that's a possibility. Okay. Okay. But so, and I think this is the hard thing is that again. When you don't, when you're not familiar with BDSM, we do kind of roll it in, and and there's this assumption that BDSM must be part and parcel of sexy fun, and, and th- orgasm has and to I be part and parcel. And I think that comes a lot from, from frankly, from porn, because when you look at BDSM yes. and porn in the porn way, it's mostly tied to sexual. There's some sort of sexual intercourse that happens, and right. frankly, that's mostly where I've seen most BDSM active. That's active. to sell it to a wider right. audience, right? Yeah. yeah. So, but I know people that in their real life they might even have they might be happily married and frankly sexually monogamous with their partner and yet they might have a craving for some physical bdsm Mm -hmm. they will have permission with their partner's blessing to go and engage in either getting their ass spanked or spanking somebody else's ass or flogging or whatever that is to them they get that and if they get turned on which often you know may happen but isn't necessarily just the prevailing force then they go home and they they have sexy with their partner because that's their thing. And so they call it play, that they can okay. play partners. I do enjoy it when they bring letters of permission from the wife. Okay. Oh, that's I love that. <laughs> yes. So would you say most of your clients have a healthy sex life outside of, you know, just generally? You know, Some they, do, some don't. Yeah. So it's a wide mix of. Yeah. If okay. you think about 25% of marriages are completely yeah. sexless, and then there are a wide, you know, vast number of single people who are not getting their sexy right. needs met. So I'm sure it's just like anything else. But okay. um, but yeah, so it is. it can be very much very separate from sexual, or they probably go home and jerk off themselves or take care of themselves or something probably if they get turned on. That would be my guess. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah. So I think just recognize that BDSM is, is, can be part of your sexy life or can be a separate particular category, if you will. I guess what, what, it, what you're trying to grasp is it's about domination right. and it is adult. It is a very sexual experience, but it's about domination, right. okay. not about having access to the woman. Right. Okay. But about possibly the woman having access to you, right. forcing you into a way that causes you to submit sexually, mm-hmm. meaning throw them down on the bench mm-hmm. and uh, have my way with them. Mm-hmm. But I am not not with my body. No exchange of fluids. Right. Um, the the mistress is the woman they do not get to have. Right. 
and that's it's, i'm guessing generally a part of the whole you know you know you are off limits you are well, this and know. that's part of how a in a married couple mm-hmm. say for example and they're doing domination and yes this is their sex life that is what the woman will say you know it's tease and denial right. and this you don't you need to prove yourself you need to earn this mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you haven't done the dishes very well in a while i had one lady she wanted to put her boy on a routine she said we're not having sex until you get up there and you get on the what do they call that thing the jogging machine Tread- yeah, the treadmill. The treadmill she said you come home from work you get on the treadmill for 15 minutes and then you come down and fix my dinner and um when i'm happy with all this mm-hmm. then we'll start having sex again <laughs> Hey. I'm telling you, that's power dynamics. And I say whether you're vanilla, whether you're kinky, and vanilla being that you're not actively embracing what you would call a PDSM, BDSM or a swinger lifestyle or poly or something. But well, yeah, and it power helped him. He was trying to get back in shape, mm-hmm. and she just found a way mm-hmm. to motivate him. So you also that. coach people on, or w- I would say like women on how to be more dominant or in, in, you know include this in their lifestyle, I guess. Not really. I I just, I'm a private sessioning dom. However, I do have those, I have an event and a party every month, all lifestyle people. And I do demos and I do a lot of, you know, we do a lot of themes and we do a lot of things Mm -hmm. that really does Mm -hmm. elevate all the mistresses in the room. Mm -hmm. We're all sharing and we're all elevating each other. Mm -hmm. And of course, the the men love to Mm -hmm. see their wives, you know, getting more and more assertive and learning more and getting more educated. Mm -hmm. So it's really fun. The group, by the way, people can find it. Um, Mistress Ella leads the Houston group and it's called Club Femme and C-L-U-B-F-E-M, Club Femme. Um, but it's, this is an international organization. Yeah. There are chapters in other cities and everything. Um, and you can find it and try and sign up. Again, you have to go through and be screened and all that sort of stuff. So, um, But they are reputable people who take this seriously. And I've sent so many clients and stuff to Club Femme because especially when you're brand new and you think, oh shit, I'm the only quote, crazy person, right? This is my thought. I'm the only crazy person who wants this. Holy shit. When you go and you realize that these other people are not, right? We Again, we think we're the quote, normal ones. They're all weirdos, but no, they're just as normal in one way and weird in another way. And they're teachers and lawyers and doctors and nurses and moms and whatever, just all walks of life, all ages, all body types, all backgrounds. And so going to these groups can be such a relief to just feel at home, right? That was the way I felt when I went into my first BDSM party group, whatever. It was like, oh my God, I belong here. I just was like, hallelujah. If you walk into a regular office building, you'll see people that look just like our members. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure discretion is obviously like very much important. We don't list share. We will not share everyone's contact emails with anyone. And um, we tell people this is like AA. This is like Vegas. Mm -hmm. If you see each other in the grocery (laughs) store and you're not at a Club Femme meeting, you don't know each other. Right. I have the hardest time with that, by the way, because I see people like, oh, I'm so excited. And but my memory's so bad. I would be like, wait, don't I know? I don't know. I don't remember where I know you. I'm oh, sorry, God. whatever. And I, but yeah, you just, it's, it's bad. Well, but. a lot of people make friends and they yes. hang out together. You got to understand yeah. people who are kinky, you know, who yeah. practice this, it's a part of their lives that's isolated. Yes. That they cannot be open and honest about. And especially, you know, people are like, why do you do this? Because I have to keep my business completely separated Mm -hmm. from Club Mm Femme. Well, I need friends who understand me, who get me, you know, and uh, this is where they are. You know, these are my friends. This is like my second family. In fact, they understand me in ways that my own family doesn't. Mm -hmm. And you need it. Like if you're going to do things well, they do as well. We need support. We need education. Mm -hmm. And there are so many different groups and everything for kinky for people into bdsm that i was astonished and amazed when i first got the nerve to venture out how much information there was exchanged at those meetings and interestingly i was used to like women might talk and help each other but men oh they just shut down in these in these meetings the men share 
they're open about stuff. They talk about how they can do better. Couples, everybody is talking and sharing. And I swear, in relationships generally, if people would talk and get together once a week or once a month to talk about their relationship, all of us would mm-hmm. do better, no matter what. Oh, you're they do. Into. They they kind of guys will be guys. You know, I see them at the club fin parties. You mm-hmm. know, and they're all like spunning each other and they're warning each other. She's a brute. She's awesome. That one's crazy. <laughs> you know, they're all like sharing notes, and I know they're talking about us, and that's okay. Right, because there's you a want camaraderie it to be that you yeah. know, and that's mm-hmm. why I'm saying if you're looking, if you've never been to a professional dominatrix, then one option is to look into Club Fem wherever you are and try to start getting to know, to know people. And you'll find out about the reputations of the, the pro doms in the right. area. And That's why I tell the boys, straight. don't get overly excited and just jump on the yeah. first woman yeah. that pays attention to right. you. Hang back. It's an organization. We're there every month. Mm-hmm. Take your time getting to know people and what they're like right. before you get involved in anything. Right. Because I'm sure there are certain mistresses who are made for certain people. Like they were much yeah. more aligned with, you know, some, one person and maybe not aligned with another and they find another mistress, you know. So it's a matter of compatibility, yeah. I'm guessing. Some yeah. are more uh, sadistic. Mm-hmm. Some are more sensual. Mm-hmm. Everybody's got a different style right. and a different motivation. Right. And some so. people just prefer different, you know, some really are into the latex. Some are into this. And yeah, so it's just like... Um, I mean, it really is like an art people. form. It's Honestly, completely. I think, you know, everyone hones their own type of, you know, when I think of art, you know, it's a craft, right? And this is, it seems like very much like a craft to me. So, or, you know, a professional craft. Yeah. Yeah. In every way. So. All right. So, all right. This has been so interesting. Can't thank, I can't thank you enough, Mr. Zella, for trusting me. Mm-hmm. To meet Tina and Aaron, letting us come here and doing this. Only you, Beth. <laughs> <laughs> that means that means so much to me, truly. But I just think everybody should know what's out there. And um, God knows, I respect the hell out of you. And um, and that's that's pretty mm-hmm. huge. So I think everybody should know and know what to aspire to. But all right, we've got to end this. We will do. Um, I want everybody to know. Come back um, next week. Make sure you subscribe. Um, Aaron will tell you where and stuff, but we'll do a follow up and we're going to talk also about more about the dungeon itself and activities and stuff here. But for today, we're going to have to kind of end this. And um, all right, y'all have y'all okay? Aaron, you want to tell them where they can find us and how they people can connect to us? Yeah, uh, you can find us on Facebook and on Instagram at Come With Us Podcast, on Twitter at Come With Us Pod. Uh, you can email us your questions, your comments, your concerns, your feedback. Uh, your confessions to come with us confessions at gmail.com that's come with us confessions at gmail.com whatever you share with us won't be shared publicly so uh, unless you want to really give us explicit permission to read it on the air but anything that gets it that hits that inbox unless it has blatant instructions uh, it stays between well the our six eyes and your eyes for typing it out yeah, I mean so, we might talk if you tell us that's okay to talk about it on air but we won't tell your name or any details about that yeah. but if it's okay to share that yeah we will so uh and then while you're listening to us especially if you're listening to us on apple podcast or if you're not go find an apple podcast if you go to the uh if you go to best buy or the apple store or anything like that go and make sure you go to the podcast page and subscribe and rate us at five stars and if it's your account leave a review telling everybody how amazing we are yes please we definitely need those reviews and uh all right well thank you thank you thank you mr zella again i'm beth darling your sexy genius creator of um sexyedschool.com so definitely go there also subscribe and find my classes on how to blow his mind while loving his body and the art of orally pleasuring her as well as for men how to increase your orgasm by up to 10 times with an aneros prostate massager um and oh by the way if you haven't listened to our special podcast a few weeks ago where we read from our new book that I released, that I edited, it's COVID Connections, a Darling Way collection of erotic short stories. So please go check that out. Hot as hell. Read it to your partner. Read it to yourself. Read it out loud. Read it quietly, whatever. But it is sexy, easy, fun bedtime stories for grownups. All right. Big hugs and love. And we will see you next week here on Come With Us Podcast. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Come With Us podcast. Be sure to follow us on social media at Come With Us podcast and send in your questions, comments, and confessions to come with us confessions at gmail.com. Until next time, keep it fun, flirty, and naughty. <laughs>